Welcome to CX Talks Fintech. We are joined here today by the Solutioning Director of TDCX, Bianca de Jesus. Bianca, it's so wonderful to have you. The pleasure is mine, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. Now, the fintech industry has revolutionized finance over the years and much greatly in the last couple of ones when all in-person transactions were not possible. Is it the lifeblood of other segments, small businesses, global organizations, and your average daily consumers? And how does the CX and fintech landscape look like today? Absolutely, Alex. Meeting customer expectations is in the DNA of all fintechs, and they are all striving to provide a frictionless digital experience to their customers. As they take CX to the next level, fintechs face many challenges, which include coping with uh, you know, regulation, increasing regulations around KYC, data privacy, and security. They also meet worldwide customer needs for, for high quality. That's one of the biggest uh, issues that they have. 24-7 service and troubleshooting mm -hmm. so that you know, the expanded the operation hours is just a, a lot of pressure to them. Keeping up with the tech changes related to customer and uh, employee experiences, that's another thing. Now, the most successful fintechs are starting to combine or mm -hmm. you know, meld the high-tech, high-touch strategy, and they're drawing on the human support to provide the subject matter expertise that's needed, you know, the responsiveness and the personal approach that a larger and more diverse uh, customer base uh, requires. Now, to understand the latest fintech strategies and challenges around CX, Thought Lab, a research firm, did a survey for 200 senior executives uh, you know, with all fintechs all over the globe. And they had a lot of findings, but one of the things that we really probed into are the many aspects of their CX approaches, which include the initiatives that they are taking, the problems that they are seeing, the investments that they are making, and the benefits that they are gaining. So that's, there's a lot of insights around it. Over the next few years, more fintechs will be providing tiered services mm -hmm. with increasing levels of human support. So that's really exciting to see. And adding human touch points into customer journeys. And it's also very important to note, Alex, that investing in outsourcing will grow tremendously. This is a comprehensive study that TDCX has mm -hmm. actually led. And apart from the subsector, the customer mix and region supported, it is interesting to see how you looked into organizing or categorizing mm -hmm. CX maturity level of the fintechs involved in the study, making a distinction between beginners and uh, leaders. So how are the fintech leaders and the fintech beginners handling the CX aspect mm -hmm. of the business? Are they facing the same challenges? That's a really interesting question, Alex, because what we found out from the study is that today's volatile economic climate is causing a growth surge for the fintechs. In tough times, CX leaders have the edge. and. Uh, Customers tend to manage uh, their financial activities more closely. The whole behavior can lead to increased businesses mm -hmm. for CX leaders and unfortunately reduced business for the others, the, the beginners, if they're not really able to cope. Now, as they pursue their journey toward the CX leadership, fintechs face challenges around regulation. So this time we're talking about you know, government uh, regulations, data privacy, KYC and also around service provisions so or the service that they deliver to, to customers. And uh, that all relates to customer service, which is very critical at this point, as we know. Measuring the quality of service, you know, are they able to, to maintain the sufficient operating hours? Are they there available to answer the inquiries from customers? And providing responsive troubleshooting. It's not just that you're able to solve the problem. You need to be able to you know, really provide the, the solution that's needed at that time. And skills development and technology uh, as uh, you know, one of the main challenges. Now, these challenges vary by based on the fintech's uh, maturity level, whether they're beginners or they're uh, leaders. When starting out, what tends to happen is that performing KYC checks, coping with cybersecurity risks, and dealing with the high cost of customer service are more prevalent. So mm -hmm. this is more for the beginners. But as CX leaders, those fintechs, they face issues associated with their success. So as they get bigger, the more complicated the, the issues uh, you know, tend to be. What are we talking about? Like maintaining 24-7 operations, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that, again, there's someone available, managing a worldwide client base. You have different regions that are being supported, you know, different backgrounds, uh, different demographics that uh, we have to take note of, and providing, again, responsive troubleshooting. So all of these fintechs are, you know, racing ahead to enrich the CX by combining digital solutions plus human touch, you know, that combination really. 
And fintechs that fall behind competitors in this area, they risk losing their market share, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know unfortunate for them. And th this is because the experience economy is front and center today. That's really the priority of uh, anyone, any company that's passionate about delivering quality CX. Now, the study shows that most fintechs have largely implemented multiple initiatives to enhance CX, which is exciting because there are those who are recognizing the opportunities and they're you know, jumping right at it. And what are we uh, seeing? Some of the actions or uh, you know, the changes that they have uh, done include the uh, steps to personalize customer service. So you see personalization mm -hmm. and making sure that they really adopt to your needs. Provide 24-7 support, which... Uh, you know, that needs to, to be responded to. Ensure data security and uh, using AI for customer recommendations. So, you know, just the, the whole system being a lot more intelligent, so mm -hmm. to speak. So in addition, uh, some fintechs are also creating seamless, intuitive customer experiences across all channels. So whether it's, uh, you know, chat, phone, text, email, and uh, based on what they have learned from customer uh, mapping journeys, uh, so they're really taking on those exercises, which is crucial in improving customer experiences overall. I think it's interesting now that we see um, the maturity of these fintech companies, both leaders and beginners mm -hmm. do share some challenges. Mm -hmm. And, and we see both of them actually gearing towards a balance between high touch, as you said, yes. and um, technology. So that, that mm -hmm. striking that perfect balance. So it is important to note here that there is great learning among mm -hmm. fintechs on the fusing of technology and human support. But Bianca, what exactly is driving the fintechs to pivot more of their strategy toward a high tech, high touch model? For fintechs, technology is not enough. But what's uh, quite unfortunate is that there's uh, little progress on the human front. So what tends to happen is that, at least based on our study, less than one-third have made significant headway to offer human touch points across the entire customer journey. And uh, what's uh, really something that we should look forward to is that this will all change in the next two years. So fintechs who responded to the survey did say that uh, you know, they're planning to fully implement a wide range of initiatives across the high-tech and high-touch continuum. Mm -hmm. So they're really responding to it and they're going to make those investments. Now, fintechs offering uh, tiered levels of human support, so the more complex support that they give their customers, they will more than double. Wow. So from 28% up to 63%. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And this includes human touch points and customer journeys, which uh, we are anticipating to jump from 30% up to 50% in the next two years. Now, we are taking a lesson from CX leaders because nearly all of them provide personalized service. More than three-fourths of those uh, who responded to this survey, to this study, are already mapping customer journeys. So they're really paying attention to the journey and the experiences that a customer is going through. They create seamless cross-channel experiences. So when you reach out to, to your fintech company mm -hmm. on email or on a phone call, they're able to you know, really look at those two channels together and take note of it for you. They provide 24 seven support and offer human support to deal with the more complex issues. So it's not like just uh, an automated answering machine <laughs> yeah. that would do that for a deeper people. level. Yeah. Yes, uh, exactly. Now, TDCX has assisted with one of uh, its longstanding clients in building its 24 seven support system. And it's been a client that we've had for like uh, almost seven years now. They have a network of 200 partners that service 120 countries. And we needed to make sure that in time for the peak season, we had the 24-7 you know, operations ready for them. And what's really exciting is that from the time that we launched it a few years back, we've been getting uh, you know, excellent net promoter scores from, from the customers. So that's one of the things that TDCX has done around this space, which is right now what the fintechs are aspiring to do. So fintechs are right now recalibrating the balance of technology and human support. And uh, it's actually more particular in uh, you know, how they grow their client bases across age and demographic segments. Because what we're seeing is that there are more customers, regardless of age, who's embracing the use of fintech. And uh, most fintechs now strike that balance in uh, key activities around customer analysis, for example, mm -hmm and acquisition and service, you know, bringing in new customers. Now, over the next two years, we have fintechs who will go even further, where most of them will, uh, you know, use tech and human approach also for marketing campaigns, onboarding their customers and upselling. 
I think it's interesting that you mentioned that more um, are gearing towards the high touch, high tech um, mm -hmm. um, strategy. When in recent years we would think that you know we're gearing towards a more high tech mm -hmm. and doing everything by AI and bot. So it's really nice to know there's a balance now between the human Absolutely. touch and technology. Absolutely, and offering human support actually provides many benefits right. to fintech customers, which translate to stronger fintech performance, which in turn results to customers wanting to stay with the companies. Now, human-driven improvements to CX enable fintechs to boost their performance across multiple dimensions. And some of these improvements that they are seeing would include you know, greater customer retention and satisfaction, mm -hmm. so customers stay because they're satisfied, improved competitiveness uh, and quality and reputation. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, these are all competing fintechs, <laughs> right, so they want to right. make sure they're ahead of the game. And more customers and, of course, greater revenue for these uh, fintechs. Well, I think that's great. Those beginners need to start listening to the leaders in terms of, of pivoting to, towards that strategy, especially since the numbers of customer retention are so high. Mm -hmm. So that, that's great. Now, based on this study, newer fintechs commence with a business model that is primarily technology-based. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, fintechs will have to make a decision on whether they see the value of a high-tech, high-touch strategy. So, Bianca, let's address the big elephant in the room. Can fintechs truly optimize customer service through technology alone? That's a, a very interesting <laughs> question. And uh, yes, we have to address the yes, elephant in the room. Do. I think what's important to note here is that in one of the many studies that came out in 2020, when uh, everyone was, was really looking at you know, how customer experiences are being mm -hmm. impacted by you know, the, the whole shift yes. uh, to no longer in person, but uh, really you know, all the different channels, which will uh, reduce the mm -hmm. idea of you know, us uh, seeing in person or interacting. There was a study by uh, Statista. 40% of customers stopped doing business with a company in 2020 due to poor customer service. And uh, despite the growing evidence, even with the pocket of fintechs who mm -hmm. responded to our survey who said that they're uh, particularly early in the CX journey and they would rather use technology to service their customers, mm -hmm. they think that that's the way to go. But the, the reason that they have behind that is that some say that you know it's uh, much cheaper for them mm. to do so, that... Uh, customers would want uh, you know 24/7 support, and they want digital services to do that for them, not necessarily humans. And the others say that human support does not offer any competitive advantage mm -hmm. to them. Now, something, some numbers that I'd like for you to take note and our audience: 69% of CX leaders use human support, and they already are citing greater customer retention. And 45% of them report increased competitiveness. And uh, this is where, let's admit it, technology-only mm -hmm. okay. fintechs will want to think twice about the future of service if they really want to keep their customers and bring in some more. That's great, Bianca. Thank you for sharing that. 69%, 45%, these are big numbers, yes. everyone. One interesting finding in the study is on how fintechs are transforming their business models to put customer experiences in the front seat. So, Bianca, what steps are fintechs um, taking? Mm -hmm. And secondly, what is reinforcing this evolution? Fintechs are actually taking multiple steps to integrate customer and employee experiences. Uh, they're really seeing the value around it now, and uh, they want to reinforce the benefits around it. 70% mm -hmm. of those fintechs who participated in our study are actually moving to integrate customer customer and employee experiences, and that percentage will just continue to grow in the next uh, two years. Now, how are they doing it exactly for those who have you know, taken the lead? They do actions such as they unify the communication channels. Mm -hmm. So text, emails, phone calls, these are all integrated between customers and employees. So you know, they're, they're making it happen. They connect employee and customer feedback. So it's comparing notes. Yes, exactly. Right, okay. uh, this is where the you know the use of data, right. using it intelligently and wisely, right. smartly. And now, yeah. yes, uh, exactly. Providing employees with more CX autonomy. This is where you empower your team right. to you know really allowed for them to solve for the problems. If uh, you know they're hired for that purpose anyway, that you did the upscaling for them, they should be able to have that autonomy to mm -hmm. you know help the customers and creating internal teams to integrate CX and EX. So this is where. Companies who have taken the lead are making investments and in making sure that they have the right resources to oversee the you know customer experiences mm -hmm. and you know having the, the right departments and resources for it, and uh, outsourcing some of the CX operations, uh, which uh, you know there's a lot of value around it. What uh, aspects of the business are they outsourcing? Um, right now, we are seeing AI development, uh, KYC verification, chat support, mm -hmm. tech support. You know more of the more complex work. 
Now, in the next two years, what's interesting is that these firms are planning to outsource more in all other CX areas. It's not limited to those four that I mentioned. Over one half of the fintechs mentioned that uh, they will outsource their chat support, while 50% said that they will outsource AI development and tech support. And Mm -hmm. you want to put numbers around it. Uh, The outsourcing average um, previously was, or actually today is uh, 104. But we're going to see that number grow to an average of 145, average FTE. So that's how much outsourcing is really going to. Is this in the next two years? Next two years. This is how much uh, we're seeing the numbers, uh, you know, uh, growing. Now, fintechs face talent gaps in important CX areas because um, especially the beginners, they don't really have the resources to train, have their team go through skills development. So the more important skills for fintechs actually happen to be customer service, software development, tech support, and subject matter expertise. Unfortunately, they are all the areas where the biggest talent gaps are. And uh, this is where uh, a company like TDCX would come in. Uh, In one of the other clients that uh, we've been working with for a number of years now, one of the solutions that we built for them being uh, or leading global operations is uh, an intuitive fraud detection system. So our solution that uh, you know we positioned to them was it actually something that spanned uh, you know beyond the wall, four walls of our office because we're a- really able to provide a risk investigation system that looks at you know telling behaviors of a fraud incident. Oh, okay. it, uh, there are a lot of indicators that you know we're really capturing and. Uh, for this company, it's a lot of value and uh, it's a lot uh, important to them because we have just saved them, you know, for potential lawsuits. Which could cost millions. <laughs> millions, exactly. <laughs> Tainted reputation. Of course. And at the end of the day, losing the business of their very loyal Entirely. customers. Fintechs actually see the financial, strategic, and operational benefits from their CX investments. And this is something that CX beginners in the business will have to take note of because there's a lot of example and uh, inspiration, so to speak, that we could take for, from the CX leaders. I think one key message that I want to highlight from what you, you just said is, you know, most of the beginners who are fearful of gearing towards the high-tech, high-touch policies because they want to save up on money, you know, um, instead of, you know, paying for mm-hmm. an additional team is outsourcing is a really one way to address that especially also for talent gaps exactly and and Mm -hmm. gaps in general Mm -hmm. which are significant to the success of any fintech industry and business so thank you so much bianca for sharing all these insights i was i learned a lot and hopefully so did you Mm -hmm. thank you thank you alex thank you for having me 